So this is going to be a test balloon for a new series of videos. This is kind of based on an old series of videos called Rez's Otaku Corner. And um, Rez's Otaku Corner was just me talking about random Japanese culture items that piqued my interest, whether it would be music, tokusats, J-drama, you know, uh, manga, anime, uh, what have you. But this is just going to be focused on anime. This is going to be called Rose's Anime Ramble. And it's mainly because I can talk about anime for an extended period of time. Because I love anime. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I'll give my opinion on stuff I have watched. Um, I'll talk about if I'm going to watch stuff, you know... I'll give my opinions on popular anime, not so popular anime, all that good shit. Uh, and I'm going to start off uh, the series and this video by talking about an anime that I'm uh, just getting into, but it's a couple of years old at this point. I think it came out in 2014, and it was, uh, it is called, I was going to say it was called, but it's, but it is called. Amagi Brilliant Park, which is kind of an interesting show. It's, it's funny so far. I'm not sure if it gets more serious or it gets more comedic. But it's made by a company called Kyoto Animation. <clears throat> and another anime that I've watched, and I actually had to finish the second raid and actually got to rewatch Fumafu, um, is Full Metal Panic, which is a good show. And there's a character in, I think it's in Fumafu, where it's just like this hamster with a bowler hat or something like that. Like a, maybe a hard hat or some shit like that. And they reference that in Amagi Brilliant Park. In like the first episode. And they even like reference it in there. It's like, this guy's just a ripoff of something. Like, and he gets like punched in the face. It's like, yeah, kind of true. Um, yeah, so far, I... I I, I'm going to finish it, hopefully. Uh, it's got my kind of humor. It's kind of It's got that kind of snarky, uh, sarcastic humor. Um, I have to finish the most recent JoJo series, which is Diamond is Unbreakable. I am uh, almost halfway done, I think. Because there's like 39 episodes, I'm on episode 15. Um, it's good. I'm not going to be watching like official subtitle versions of it because it just bothers the shit out of me. With all of the fucking uh, weird omissions they make and the changes they make. Because there's uh, a lot of the stuff in JoJo's is based off of music. Like, in the original uh, JoJo Phantom Blood... There are, people, there, there are two people that JoJo meets called Dire and Straits, which is obviously a reference, in, a reference to um, Dire Straits, which is a band. Um, and then uh, Speedwagon, named after... His, his name is even like R... Like it's Richard E.O. Uh, Speedwagon, which is R.E.O. Speedwagon, which is a band. Um... Their ending theme for part one and part two of JoJo was Roundabout by Yes, which is a song from the 70s by, you know, as I said, by the band Yes, which is fucking an awesome song. It's a catchy song, and I fucking hate the fact that I have that shit stuck in my head. Um, they also have awesome openings. Uh, the first one is Sono Chino Sadame, which that's spelled S-A-D-A-M-E, for those of you who might not know. That, that is an actual Japanese word. And you might uh, have thought I said sodomy. No. Uh, then there's Bloody Stream, <clears throat> which is part two's opening. Part three is Stardust Crusaders. And that opening is Stand Proud by Jin Hashimoto. And the the first one I do believe is uh, Sonochino Sodome is performed by 
Hirowaki. It's like Tommy Hirowaki something. Uh, I forgot his last fucking name. The second theme was done by a guy named Koda. Third one is Jin Hashimoto. The second part of part three, which was called the second arc or Egypt arc or whatever the fuck you want to call it, that had a song called Sono Chino Kyoku, and then, you know, End of the World, because I think that's what that meant, or that was like the. And that was written by. That, that was performed by the Joe Stars. It was just Joe and then, like, Stars. J O Stars. Um, and that was Jin, Koda, and. Uh, Tommy and they all perform different versions of this, you know, different parts of the song, which is cool. Um, and the ending for part, the ending for part three, because as I said, the part one and part two both have the same ending. It's roundabout. Part three, the first part of part three, I think it was called "Last Train Home." I actually looked this up. I might as well. Um, I think it was called Last Train Home. <clears throat> and um, the Egypt arc, the ending for that, because as I said, the beginning was Sono Chino Kyoku, End of the World. Uh, the ending was uh, Walk Like an Egyptian by Paula. I think it was Paula Abdul, did Walk Like an Egyptian. Um. Crusaders. Uh, uh, and then part four had a couple openings. I'm only through the first opening, which is Crazy Bizarre Town by the DU. Or the DU. I'm not sure if that's actually how they pronounce it. Um, Alright, let's see... Oh, yeah, this show's violent as fuck, by the way. Uh, ending song. So, stand proud, walk by, walk like, walk like an Egyptian. So weird. I thought it was something else. Uh, maybe it's the second season that had that. I don't. Know. I thought I thought it was the. Because uh, I know they have it in the second season where they play walk like an Egyptian at certain certain points. Uh, yeah. So last train home. Um, sorry, had a had a shiver, and it was like. Uh, then they had a couple things performed by the brothers Oingo Boingo. Uh, not not the band Oingo Oingo Boingo, which would be fucking cool. I'm sure Danny Elfman would be like, sure, whatever the fuck. Um, I get, I get that vibe from him. <laughs> um. So yeah, that there, like, there's that, and then um, the ending theme for at least the first, like the first half of uh, Dumb is Unbreakable, is called uh, "I Want You" by Savage Garden, which is a f another god damn catchy song. I fucking <laughs> I fucking hate that it's so catchy. Um. And that's like that's the most recent JoJo series. I'm not sure if they're gonna if they do go forward. Like I have no fucking clue what because there's like a branching story after Time is Unbreakable in the manga. I do believe and it's like you can it's also a reality thing, or you go on. I think the next one focuses around Jolene Cujo or someone else. It's like. It kind of goes weird after part four. It's there's like all of these different stories. Um, <sighs> and apparently JoJo's playing on Adult Swim, which. Uh, but yeah, going back, uh, I think I go back to the original point I was making before all this sidetracking about the music. There's stand names, and then like there's a stand name called Bad Company. It's in Diamonds Unbreakable. The English, like the Crunchyroll version of that is it's called the Worst Company. It's like he, I think he quite clearly says Bad Company. It's like 
really? <laughs> Same thing with uh, Crazy Diamond. Crazy Diamond is a reference to Shine On You Crazy Diamond, which is a Pink Floyd song, and they change it to uh, Shining Diamond. And, like, again, quite clearly, they're saying, you know, Crazy Diamond, but they fucking subtitle it something else. Same thing with Oingo Boingo, it's like, one brother's called Oingo, the other one's called Boingo, but they don't call him Oingo and Boingo in the fucking subtitles, even though that's what they're saying. It's like, just don't subtitle it at that fucking point, because we can understand. Um, then, um, Red Hot Chili Pepper, this is called Chili Pepper. It's like, it's like they literally, sometimes they're, they are selling chili saying chili pepper other times they're literally saying red hot chili pepper it's like you and they just subtitle chili pepper it's like then um uh what other stupid fucking uh it is as if they couldn't get the rights like you just ask me like is it you just it's a reference it's not like you're You know, like, what the fuck do I know about licensing issues? So it's like, this is just from my perspective. Um, and I, 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 you know, I don't know what they're, like, I haven't seen the dub version, so it's like, I don't know what the fuck they changed about it. And it's like, eh. I, I like the Japanese voice actors anyway. My favorite Japanese voice actor. There are actually two. There's the guy who does... Jotaro Kujo, and the guy who does Dio Brando, and Jonathan, or not Jonathan, uh, Joseph. Old Joseph. And I like young Joseph. But it's, I think, I'm not sure if young Joseph is actually voiced by the same person as old Joseph. But <laughs> like, Dio is just fuck. I love Dio's voice actor. The Japanese voice actor is fucking awesome. And like, they get it's like with American dubs, like, Sometimes there's a lot of passion put in it. Other times it's like you can tell they're just maybe phoning it in. It's like, okay. But like, the Japanese voice actors, they get into shit. It's like you feel like they, it's fucking crazy. It's like they're they're just acting. It's like, like they're voice acting. They're just acting. But you're just recording their voice, not, um, you know, not, they're, they're, you're not recording the visuals. You're just recording the audio. And it's like, that's how I think people should approach that. Um, that's just me. Um, one of the weird things, because uh, this, the JoJo series, it's it's an anime, and it's it's written by a Japanese guy. Uh, Hiroaki, uh, fuck. I should know this guy's name. Uh, uh, I'm I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. It's Hiroaki something. Or I, I miss. I, I think it's Hiro something Aki then. Uh, Araki Hirohiko. Hirohiko Araki. Okay, I was totally fucking wrong. Um, but it's like the production staff is like Korean. It's kind of weird. Uh, that's just me. It, it's weird. I, I can, and I can't really get into the like anime that's based on Chinese lore. Like I, I don't know what it is. Like there's all this stuff that like there's a lot of Korean based anime now, and it's like uh, it's not my cup of tea. I know that makes me sound like a fucking asshole, but it's, that's that's who I am. <laughs> Uh, ooh, that was weird. Uh, Ugon no Kaze. That's the fifth story arc of Jojo no Kyojin. So it's Giorno Giovanna. Yeah. So, joins Passion, an organized crime group that employs many stand users. Okay, yeah. that's That's the next one. I'm not sure if they're going to do that. They might. And then there's Star Ocean, which I do believe centers around uh, Jolene Cujo. And Jolene is named after 
Jolene. The song by, at least I do believe Jolene Cujo is named after the song Jolene. Jolene, 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 Jolene. Which is a catchy fucking song, and I don't necessarily like. Um, like I, I just don't like her necessarily. Um, I like I like her music. I just don't like her. And apparently, and, and Jolene Cujo is the only female JoJo. Although you do see in part two, you do see JoJo's mom. And JoJo is Joseph Joestar on that point, and his mom is Lisa Lisa. And I'd argue, I guess she's not technically a Joestar. But it's like, and her name doesn't start with uh, Joe, so it's, or like, end in Joe, so. Yeah. It's named after Dolly Parton's song Stone Free. <laughs> And I gotta say, she looks fucking badass. Uh, Jolene Cujo, like... <laughs> yada yada dama. Uh... If you, okay. Is that named for anything? Stone Free Jimi Hendrix song. English name, Stone Ocean. Like, I don't get this... I don't get the weird things. Um... Anyway, uh, yeah, that's, I guess that's the first good episode of Rise's Anime Ramble. Uh, like it, share it if you, if you really want to share it, but uh, ta-ta.